Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it. Uh, something totally different today. I posted on Twitter a picture of a map that I made, a fantasy map, and I thought it would be kind of cool to try and do this on camera. Maybe some of you would be interested in this, and we'll see how this goes. I'm going to mess with my light here. Oh, I think it's going to make a difference. Anyway, uh, we're going to see what happens. This may be a one-off thing. This may be a little... I don't know what we're going to do. But I wanted to go ahead and show you my process when building these... When drawing these fantasy maps. Um, I learned a lot from uh, uh, Ink and... Or Pen and Blade and WASD20. Uh, some awesome channels. Lots of good stuff. Just random YouTube videos I've been watching on how to draw and stuff like that. So you'll notice my setup's a little jankified. Uh, it's because... I, I don't have a tripod set up. Uh, this is just something I'm kind of pulling out of my out of my rear end, and so I didn't want to get like a tripod for my camera or anything like that. So I, I jimmy rigged it as best I can. You can see I've got my paper here. It's a little foreshortened because of where the camera is placed, but you can see what I've got going on here. And now you see my hand. Ooh, oh, uh, never mind the band aid. So anyway. I want to draw a fantasy map. It's going to be very similar to the one we drew last time. Still just trying to get used to it. And I'm going to be starting in pencil, and then we'll go in ink. I am using a 2B, a 2B pencil. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to draw a little bit darker than I want. What I think I want is I think I want something that's going to kind of go this way. We're going to have a C over on this side and kind of a peninsula-looking thing that might take up this side. So I'm just going to, there's lots of ways to do this. A lot of people suggest like putting down beans or other things like that. I just like to freehand it and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start. And I like to be real jagged with my lines. I mean, that's all I'm doing. You can see and like as I draw, it's like, okay, well, let's see here. Um, maybe we want to have a big, long, narrow section here come out. Like I'm just totally kind of winging it and then shoot like that, you know. So what I'm going to do is, in between each step, I'm going to jump it into time-lapse. And so, really, I am doing nothing more than just freehanding this. Kind of just making it up as I go, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to skip into time-lapse, and then I'll meet you back up here when we've got something that looks pretty okay. Okay, so looking at my little camera here, it seems that things are um, coming up okay. I like the general shape here. These islands off to the side here I think are kind of interesting. Uh, one of the things that people like to think about are plate tectonics when building these maps, and I don't really like to go into that kind of... I mean, I think about it, but I'm not actively building the plate tectonics themselves and just what I do is what I did here is I just tried to get the general shape and then add some interest to it so like we've got this big inlet here like a, I think that's really neat to have this hidden bay over here and what we'll probably end up doing is end up having some rivers from somewhere come on in and and uh, feed into that area what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out where I want to put the mountains this is kind of the process I actually like to get my shape and then I'll put in the mountains, and then what we'll probably do is put in some towns and things like that, and then we can start the inking. I like to do a bunch of it on um, pencil first, and then obviously ink once you're obviously certain with what you want. So the way I'm looking at this, it feels like we need a mountain range kind of over here in this area, like just kind of splitting this in half maybe. And uh, that might be a, a thing to do. And then this side could be significantly drier and more deserty. That would make sense if you feel prevailing winds are coming this way, bringing all the moisture this way. This way, area would be very, very fertile. And then if we have mountains, obviously 
brushing, uh, preventing all the moisture from traveling over the mountains, that would make this area much more arid. So I think I'm going to start... I think I like this shape a lot. I think it's interesting. We might fiddle with it a bit more as we progress. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some mountains. And I'm actually going to start... Mm, Let's see, if I want my mountains to kind of come, I want them to sweep maybe this way. We'll have a range here, and then we'll have a desert up here. I think that's going to work good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start down here. I'm going to leave enough room that you can get by. I think that would make sense. And the way I like to do my mountains, at least for right now, what I've been doing recently, is just doing a simple mountain shape like that. And then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll draw ridge lines on all the mountains. But I like to overlap them as I go and kind of send them in the direction I want them to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here. I'm going to draw my little ridge line, and I'm just going to just going to give each little mountain some depth to it. And we're going to go back in later, and we're going to shade these so you can see what's kind of happening here. It gives them immediate, they, they pop off the page immediately. And it's just little, I'm not, I'm not doing anything other than little squiggly lines. Uh, I think a good point now before we get into the inking would be to start placing some main settlements So I know that I'm gonna want one in this area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it there and Where else should we have some maybe we have some dwarven we have a dwarven settlement way up here in the mountains And where else should we have one? I feel like we should dot the coast with some like this would be a good place to have a settlement and down here would be good. And one of these islands needs to be inhabited. Let's say we have... Let's see. Maybe right here would be good. Put a, put a city there. Or a something or other. Like, this is going to be the main one. I think this is going to be the biggest city in the region. And we'll do another one over here. So, I think that'll be good. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use... <laughs> I don't have a ruler, so I'm actually going to use my pencil as a straight edge here. And I'm going to save myself some room to make sure that I can write in... That wasn't straight at all. Ha! <laughs> that was terrible. I'm going to do this. I'm going to... Uh, so I can have some room to draw in my city names without um, it getting gross. Let's see, is that going to be... Maybe I do need a ruler. Shh, don't laugh at me. I don't know what I'm doing. One thing I do think I want to do before I get too far into it is go ahead and start placing some rivers because that will open up some ideas for further settlements. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have... All of our rivers are going to stem from, the map, from streams in our mountain areas. So, for example, we might have a little mountain runoff that ends up coming this way. And it hooks over here. And I just like to make my rivers especially squiggly. I try to find little indents for openings. And what's this doing now is it's establishing. This is the lowest part of the land here. And what you can do then is you can have other little tributaries that feed into it. And you get this nice 
open like maybe even we have one here that starts coming this way and then turns and then meets up here and you'll notice they always meet they don't split that was one of the big things i learned is rivers really never split they meet up to form bigger rivers so you only have one place where the river will empty into a body of water and you might have a bunch of tributaries like here this river is getting to be pretty pretty big but i like this this is starting to look kind of nice and maybe we'll have another small river up here by this i think we said a dwarven area so just nice and swirly here and your rivers will start to show you where other things are where you're going to want to put other things have a little zoop and a little these are all official terms zoops and such what you know <laughs> now over here i think we're going to have one we're going to have like this big area here we're going to have a singular river that runs this way and actually it's going to kind of come through here and split this large region in half. There, like that. And yeah. So the problem here is that it doesn't feel like there's enough tributaries that are gonna make this really large. So maybe it's a smaller river. It's I mean it's long, but it's not necessarily although all these mountains feeding into this one will just give them a few more tributaries here maybe this one runs alongside it for a while swings down this way have this weird little gap of land here let's offshoot let's branch off this way and this one will swing up here and actually come this way there I like that I think that'll be good same thing here come up here and maybe even have one branch off this way so you can see that none of these rivers are splitting. They're all joining up to create a bigger one. Now this feels like this could be a much larger river, and I might even, as we do it in pen, expand a bit. So that might be kind of good. And now I feel like we should have a city right there, like this major area here. And maybe this area here down here will be really hilly. I think I'm going to extend. Now that I'm seeing this, I'm going to extend my mountains. They're going to come up here, and we're going to make this area desert. I think that's that's going to make the most sense at this point in the map design. There. Now, because we've got this nice river, this is going to keep this area fairly fertile. So like this whole area here, we might make some hills to kind of create a river valley here. I think that'll be kind of neat. And then up here we can have a lot of forest. And down here there'll be lots of woods. We need more cities, I think. So let's see. I think one down here would make sense one up here and they don't all need to be cities maybe some are just like little strongholds or forts or who knows what maybe a little an orc or a goblin camp or something like that so I don't, I, I don't know yeah so that's looking that's looking better I think I think it's time to go ahead and jump into some inking just to, just to give you an idea of what that's like and the the scariest part about inking for me is it's it's final <laughs> your line is done so yeah i think we're gonna get started with that next so unfortunately at this point the audio on my microphone went all wonky and i sounded like darth vader so i had to stop and i had to put the rest of this video in time lapse so this is going to be two times as fast as uh normal and so what I did is I have my second thickest pen, my 08, and I'm outlining the coastlines. It's pretty straightforward. You'll notice there's a bit of a deviation from the pencil guidelines. That's always kind of the case with things like this. So I'm going to let this go, and I'll come back when we move on to the next step.
All right, so now that we have the main uh, outline done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my number one pen, the thickest pen that I have, and I'm going to uh, actually outline the southern border, the southern shores, the southern coastline. And that's going to create a nice little 3D effect that's going to make the whole map kind of pop. So you'll see that happening. You'll also notice that I've gone ahead and really tried to uh, avoid those, those lines that I put in earlier. Because I want to leave that open so I can write the names of my cities in later on when we get there. That's one of the last steps, actually, I think we'll do. So after this step, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right to the... Uh, I'm going to jump right to um, the thinnest pen I have, and we're going to outline the coast again. And that's just another little technique to do to really kind of make it feel like it's raised above the water, and I think it creates a nice little effect. So uh, enjoy that. And then with that being said, that's pretty much going to do it for this first map-making episode. So I'll be back in just a minute for a full, complete sign-off. So as we reach the end of the video here, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please hit the like button. Leave your feedback below. Let me know. Uh, town names. I could always use some cool names for cities. Um, as well, if you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss anything fun on the channel. And uh, with all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever. And I will see you for the next episode of Fantasy Map Making. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.